If you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe. Hit the subscribe button below, and hit also the notification bell so that you won't miss any of my new videos. April 27, 1521. On that fateful day, Lapu Lapu led his tribe to repel Spaniards from invading their shores. Lapu Lapu's ardent love for freedom led him to victory. Or at least that was what were taught to us in primary schools. However, Antonio Pigafetta, the chronicler of Magellan's voyage, tells us a much colorful, albeit different story. Who is Antonio Pigafetta? Antonio Pigafetta, born in 1491 and died in 1531, was a Venetian scholar and explorer. He joined the expedition to the Spice Islands led by explorer Ferdinand Magellan under the flag of King Charles I of Spain. During the expedition, he served as Magellan's assistant and kept an accurate journal. Pigafetta was one of the 18 men who returned to Spain in 1522, under the command of Juan Sebastian Elcano out of the approximately 240 who set out three years earlier. These men completed the first circumnavigation of the world. Pigafetta's surviving journal is the source for much of what is known about Magellan and Elcano's voyage. It is also the only source of the Battle of Matan where Magellan met his doom. Magellan's Landing in Homanhan Island Contrary to old textbook depictions of Ferdinand Magellan arriving in the Philippines to invade the country, the actual purpose of Magellan's voyage was to discover a westward route going to the Spice Islands. Magellan was a Portuguese sailing under the flag of Spain. The King of Portugal did not support Magellan and reject his proposal of discovering westward route to the east because Portugal already dominating the eastward route to Spice Islands. Because of this, Magellan went to Charles I, the King of Spain. Charles I agreed to support Magellan in finding a westward route to the east so that Spain can have its own share in the spice trade. After crossing the Pacific Ocean, the expedition team sighted the highest peak on Summer Island on March 16, 1521. On Magellan's orders, the crew waited until the following day until they landed on the beach of Homanhan, an uninhabited island. When they landed on Homanhan, Magellan's crew was detected by Raha Homaban, the chief of a nearby island called Limasawa. Homaban sent scouts to Homanhan to investigate. Pigafetta details how the Filipino natives approached their beach settlement from a boat. We saw a boat coming toward us with nine men in it. Therefore, the Captain General, Magellan ordered that no one should move or say a word without his permission. When those men reached the shore, their chief went immediately to the Captain General, giving signs of joy because of our arrival. Magellan presented the natives with mirrors, bells, red caps, combs, and ivory. In exchange, the natives offered the foreigners fish, wine, and bananas, which the Spaniards mistook for figs. Pigafetta added. They had nothing else then but made us signs with their hands that they would bring rice, and coconuts and many other articles of food within four days. Magellan was caught between feuding chieftains. The highest ranks in society in pre-colonial central Philippines, or the Visayan region, were composed of local chieftains or Datus who cooperated or competed against each other. In some places, there was a pecking order among the ranks of the Datus, vassals or subordinate Datus were less powerful leaders who allied themselves with Datus who controlled trade and had more resources. Magellan and his crew witnessed this play of politics, but did not recognize its dynamics. They even mistook these local chieftains for kings, which they were not. One of the kings with whom Magellan forged a close friendship was Raha Hamabin of the small island of Limasawa. Hamabin was a rival of one of the chiefs on Mactan Island, Lapu Lapu. Another chief in Mactan, Datu Zula, was also wary of Lapu Lapu. Pigafetta writes. On Friday, April 26, Zula, a chief of the island of Mactan, sent one of his sons to present two goats to the captain general and to say that he would send him all that he had promised, but that he had not been able to send it to him because of the other chief Lapalapu, 
who refused to obey the King of Spain. Because of this, Magellan promised to eliminate the king, Lapu Lapu, who would not recognize the superiority of Spanish crown. Magellan's Arrogance and Overconfidence It was Magellan's arrogance and his overconfidence on medieval weaponry that cost him his life. In one of their encounters with Datus aboard the Victoria, Magellan demonstrated the superiority of Spanish armor and weapons, to the amazement of the locals. Pigafetta described the encounter in proud detail. Then the Captain General had a man armed as a soldier, and placed him in the midst of three men armed with the swords and daggers, who struck him on all parts of the body, thereby was the king rendered almost speechless. The Captain General told him through the slave that one of those armed men was worth one hundred of his own men. Magellan fervently believed that his men were so superior to the natives that he allowed 49 of his crew to face off against a force of 1,500 enraged natives. He was so confident that he refused the help of his allies, Raha Hamaban and Datazula, and asked of them to just watch how they fought. Pigafetta writes. The Christian king, Hamabon would have aided us. But the captain told him before we landed, not to leave his boat, but to stay to see how we fought. Chiefs Hamabin and Zula obeyed, to Magellan's demise. Magellan was an excellent explorer and navigator, but he was no battle tactician. Refusing the help of the two chiefs was his first big mistake at the Battle of Matan. A lopsided battle of Mactan. The Battle of Mactan is often depicted in films and paintings as a fierce battle between Filipinos and Spaniards of arguably equal force, won only by Filipinos by virtue of their love of freedom. In reality, it was a horrific battle for Magellan and his crew. According to Pigafetta, they arrived at the shores of Mactan three hours before sunrise. Magellan sent a message to the natives saying that if they still refused to recognize the Spanish king and pay them tribute, they would demonstrate how effective their swords were at wounding people. In reply, Lapu Lapu's men told Magellan that although the Spaniards had lances, they too, were armed with bamboo and stakes hardened with fire. The natives requested Magellan's party to wait until morning before attacking so they could gather more warriors to which Magellan obliged. When the sun rose, Magellan, including his crew of 49, which 11 remained on the ship, witnessed how the natives were highly organized at warfare. When we reached land, those men had formed in three divisions to the number of more than 1,500 persons. When they saw us, they charged down upon us with exceeding loud cries, two divisions on our flanks and the other on our front. Against spears, bows and arrows, Magellan's muskets and armor proved worthless. The musket took one minute to reload and fire, while the bow and arrow took one or two seconds to shoot between two arrows. Realizing their huge disadvantage, the Spaniards panicked and began firing at no particular. When the natives saw that we were shooting our muskets to no purpose, they redoubled their shouts. When our muskets were discharged, the natives would never stand still, but leapt hither and thither, covering themselves with their shields. They shot so many arrows at us and hurled so many bamboo spears at the Captain General. Some of the bamboo spears are tipped with iron, besides pointed stakes hardened with fire, stones, and mud. We could scarcely defend ourselves. Magellan's second mistake, burning the natives' houses. Realizing that they were no match for the natives they so underestimated, Magellan became desperate, so he ordered some of his crew to distract the natives by burning their houses. Pigafetta is generous in details. When they saw their houses burning, they were roused to greater fury. Two of our men were killed near the houses, while we burned twenty or thirty houses. So many of them charged down upon us that they shot the captain through the right leg with a poisoned arrow. The wounded Magellan ordered his men to retreat more slowly, 
but the enraged natives were relentless at the pursuit. Natives shot only at our legs, for the latter were bare. And so many were the spears and stones that they hurled at us, that we could offer no resistance. We continued to retire from the shore always fighting up to our knees in the water. The natives continued to pursue us, and picking up the same spear four or six times, hurled it at us again and again. Magellan's Death According to Pigafetta, it was not Lapu-Lapu who slayed Ferdinand Magellan, but many natives, probably battle-hardened, evidenced by their proficiency with spears and very large bolos. This was something that Magellan and his company did not expect. Recognizing the captain, so many turned upon him that they knocked his helmet off his head twice, but he always stood firmly like a good knight, together with some others. Thus did we fight for more than one hour, refusing to retire farther. One of them wounded him on the left leg with a large cutlass, which resembles a scimitar, only being larger. That caused the captain to fall face downward, when immediately they rushed upon him with iron and bamboo spears and with their cutlasses, until they killed our mirror, our light, our comfort, and our true guide. It was Magellan's arrogance, his overconfidence on medieval weaponry, and so underestimating the natives that cost him his life. Magellan fervently believed that his men were so superior to the natives that he allowed 49 of his crew to face off against a force of 1,500 enraged natives. He was so confident that he refused the help of his allies. After Magellan's death, Juan Sebastian Elcano took over the helm and thereby completing the world's first circumnavigation. Pigafetta's account is the only eyewitness account of the Battle of Mactan, and the only written source mentioning Lapu-Lapu. Actually, aside from this, any other information about Lapu-Lapu is from oral tradition or baseless claim. However, this account of Pigafetta is enough to secure Lapu-Lapu's place in history as the first Filipino hero. If you find this video informative and helpful, please give it a like and share with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so that you will not miss any of our new videos.